Jalen played, you know, and it's not so much just that game. It's just the fact that Jalen is going in the right direction. He's not there yet, but he's, he's closing in on where they want to see him go. So I think they're going to give serious co consideration to him being the guy. And if there's something out there that, you know, they get some great deal, that's that, that, that could change things. But I would put my money that that Jalen Hurts is going to be the quarterback next year. I would I would be confident of that. It's going to take something extraordinary to change it. Now, something extraordinary would be a marquee quarterback that's available that somehow you get for a, a, a first round pick. Troy Aikman too, and Troy, I'll tell you, man, he kept saying it to me. It was, it was so spot on that all the Eagles had to do was find a single coverage, and they would have kept themselves in the ball game. They were running the ball at five six a clip. They only ran the ball seventeen times. The Bucks ran the ball thirty one times. The Eagles threw more than the Buccaneers did with Tom Brady. Combine that with the turnovers. That's why you get killed 31 15. It, the coaching, the execution was just brutal. Let's bring in our dear friend, Gary Cobb from Fox 29 in Philadelphia. And I'll start it right out. Gary, who are you more disappointed in? The coaching and the preparation of what they were doing with those soft ass zone coverages that you and I were barking about all year long? Or the fact that Jalen simply just could not find a single coverage wide out. I mean, he struggled reading that defense of Todd Bowles. Who are you more disappointed with? Well, clearly it's the coaches, you know what I mean? Because all they were doing with design and really they weren't, they really didn't make any adjustments. They didn't adjust to uh, what the situation that they knew. Uh, they were playing a three zone. Come on, cover three. You see the safety's playing 10 yards off the, the wide receiver. You know, and, and now you're playing against a guy like Brady. You know he would take that all day long. He is he was he's never impatient. And I I just was hoping that they would go into this game and realize take what they give you. You know, that that's what you gotta do. And and then you're able to adjust to whatever they're doing, but you gotta take what they give you. And uh they just really it was a panic. I mean that's that's what you had happen. It's it's like the the, the um the people that they have a fire in the, you know, the apartment building and, you know, they don't make it out. You know why? They panic and they end up running to a place that's the worst place in the, in the apartment to run to. And unfortunately people lose their lives with that, the panic. And, but you, you know, if you're a veteran coach, come on, you, you don't, you don't panic. Let's see what they're doing. You know, you talk to the people upstairs. What do you see out there? Well, they, in cover three, now they did blitz some of their, they had run blitzes. And it made sense that they're going to see some run blitzes. They know they're going to try to run that options. They're going to run those options with uh, with Jalen. So they took those away and uh, they really didn't adjust uh, well to what the uh, Tampa Bay Bucks were giving them. And really they, they kind of self-destructed because if they'd have just looked outside and had some automatics when they come up to the line of scrimmage, run a seven yard out, boom, we take it seven yards, second and three, you know, and, and you, you make them come out of that zone they were playing. And it really wasn't, uh, you know, they didn't get into the, to uh, some of the exotic passages. They got into them on third down. They stop them on first down. And then they got into these exotic packages where you even had one time where uh, the big fellow was dropping and, um, you know, he was dropping in coverage. Uh, big Veda, he's dropping out of there, you know, 300, whatever, 60 pounds, whatever, dropping out of there. And they had the, the corners coming on the outside. But it just it just seemed like they, they really didn't come in with confidence, you know, and if, if you're confident, you don't panic. Let's see what they're doing. Let's talk about it on the sideline. And then, and then we're going to attack these guys. And then defensively, 
they, they, they again, they, they, uh, you, you know that Tom Brady will take those five yards, whatever he'll take it, and that's what he did. They nickel and dime down the field. Next thing you know, you look up seventeen nothing. Then it's twenty four nothing. Then you look up it's thirty one to nothing, and you haven't done anything offensively and defensively. They haven't killed you. They slice you up with little slices. Yeah. The, you know, no, not not a lot of big plays. The biggest play was on the last touchdown. That's the biggest play they had. Other than that, it was all those short plays. Nothing to write home about. Nothing any big deal. But you're you're giving this to them. You're not taking it away. You're not playing aggressively enough. Where, you know, and with all of the receivers they had out. Uh, See, Gary, that's my issue, Gary. With I mean, you had an injured Mike Evans. Yep. Godwin was out. Yep. Gronk is just really the last two weeks back into playing um, game shape football. I mean, yeah. you got Perriman off the street and yep. you're playing 10 yards back in your zone coverages. And I'm going like this against the guy who's not known for going vertical. That's he's right. a slot receiver. He yep. throws to the tight end and backs. That's yep. what he's made his Super Bowl living on. Yeah. And it's almost, Gary, it was almost like, like they were completely out. Like, I mean, I, 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 I'm so confused. And what were you not watching for 20 years? And how this guy wins I games? Mean, Troy in the game. Troy saying, "Look, the, you could go ahead and take that out. Take that. They're paying off your 10 yards. Take it. You come up to the line of scrimmage where they, they it should have given Jalen the freedom to do that. And, and clearly, because they were panicked on the sideline, Jalen he was confused about what they were doing." It was really, um, what do you say, death by uh, a thousand uh, cuts. You yeah. know, that's what it was. It was, I mean, think about think about Tampa Bay. Did they do anything that was like, wow? No. No, no. they didn't do anything that was wow. And uh, you look up, it's 31 nothing. That is it's really a shame, but this is the kind of thing where, when you you know, they had the, the key they had was they've been there before. There was no panic. But clearly, the Eagles panicked. They did. They weren't able to adjust to what they were seeing, and that's what really cost them the game. You know, it's it's a shame because, you know, they they had uh, made some strides this year. I mean, uh, hurts the way he looked. You know, you hate to have a situation like that, but this was a case where they were not able to adjust to what they had, and they they could have adjusted and started nickel and diamond. The Bucks, the way they were nickel and diming them. Take that five yard out. Take the little stop route to the back. You know, it's it, you, and nickel and dime all the way down the field. They did a good job with some of the run blitzes they put together to take away some of their uh, those options. So it's either run inside uh, or run off tackle, and you know do some of that, and 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 take those little short routes. Gary, uh, even Fournette done. and Jones were out. I know. I know. Come on. <laughs> no way. They, and, and come on. They didn't put together any lethal running attack. That was – it wasn't a lethal running attack. It wasn't a lethal passing attack. It was nickel and dime, and they were able to do that. And and this is a case where, you know, I, I hate – you know, they, they really didn't put up much of a fight. It was really – it's really a shame because – I know a lot of the guys probably didn't feel good about it because not where Tampa Bay just outplayed them, but clearly um, this was not anything Nick wants. This it was, it was a bad, bad job by Nick, bad job by Jonathan Gannon. They really didn't. They didn't do a good job coaching. Gary, how much, how much damage has Jalen Hurts done? to his future in Philadelphia with a performance like that. Can you just take 60 minutes of football and just put it and, car, you know, compartmentalize it and go like this? These are the games that he has struggled in his past, got yanked out of a national title game, mm -hmm. okay? They got killed in the semifinal game at Oklahoma. Gets in a moment here, and it was chaotic, couldn't spot the single coverage wide out. Basic yeah. stuff. That's Coaching right. played a factor in that. I completely agree. But how much damage do you think when Roseman and the owners sit down and go, what's the ceiling to this guy? We can win ball games. We're showing we can win with him, but what's his ceiling? How much damage did he do? 
I, I think he did some damage, but I, I think he's in a good situation because, you know, you see the coach right away comes out on his side uh, because he knows he didn't do a good job. So I think he's going to be the guy next year because I don't, I don't think anybody's available right there. Now, something could happen during the offseason. Now, wait a minute. Uh, Let me ask you this. Russell Wilson yeah. came out over the weekend and said that he's going to reevaluate his situation in Seattle. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean because he's still got two years remaining on his deal that Seattle yeah. is going to yeah. be in that conversation. You know, you throw draft choices out at somebody, you have a conversation. Money always speaks as well. You can always change a person's yeah. mind by throwing bags of money. Do you think the Eagles will go out and at least kick the tires on Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson? I think they'll look at uh, probably more Deshaun Watson than Russell Wilson uh, because they got used to, you know, they got really got uh, a lot of youth. I don't know how many guys, you know, what's going to happen with Jason Kelsey going forward. I don't know. They So I think they would probably be, move, be more interested in the younger guy uh, because um, he's going to be around there a while and they can build around him. But I don't know about Russell Wilson. They'd be willing to do that. And then Russell Wilson, Wilson also has a, no trade clause, so he can decide where he wants to go. So th that's probably unlikely that he and, and then uh, he and his wife they want to go from what I hear. You see the New York area, L.A. They want the bright lights uh, stuff for her uh, career and for his career. So uh, and he, who knows? He probably wants to do something in the media or something kind of in the spotlight after he finishes playing. So I, I think he wants to. So I don't think Russell Wilson, but I would say. How about Derek Carr? Derek Carr yeah. came out over the weekend, and after the game, he's basically said this: If you don't get Basachi in there as the start as the, uh, the head coach, he said that we'll all sit back and all evaluate everything. Here's a guy that's had five or six different head coaches and coordinators. Here's a guy that had a magical year this year with all the chaos in that organization. That's right. He's in the top five in passing. It seems every year. Would that be somebody or he, maybe he even a Garoppolo, he, he's, even he's Jimmy Garoppolo? Where, he's young enough where you would say, you know, we, let's say, you know, he'd say, well, we'll maybe have six, seven years with him. We think we could win something with him. I think he's a guy that they would be interested in. Um, plus, you know, he, he he has shown that he's got quality. He's got those good leadership qualities, things they would look at. Uh, but. I, you know, I don't know that they're going to go, but so far with these guys, because they are going to require some draft picks, you know? Oh, yeah. So, but in knowing the Eagles brass, they're going to talk, they're going to talk about the quarterbacks. And with the way that the Jalen played, you know, and it's not so much just that game. It's just the fact that Jalen is going in the right direction. He's not there yet, but he's, he's closing in on where they want to see him go. So I think they're going to give serious consideration to him being the guy. And if there's something out there that, you know, they get some great deal, that's that that, that could change things. But I would put my money that that Jalen Hurts is going to be the quarterback next year. I would I would be confident of that. It's going to take something extraordinary to change it. Now, something extraordinary would be a marquee quarterback that's available that somehow you get for a, a first round pick let's say a first round pick and some money and you're able to still do something with those two picks, but they know they need help in other areas. Like they really need to get another pass rusher. You know, they need to do that. Linebackers. They also they need to get a marquee linebacker. They need a yep. guy that can really run. That's in there all the time. That's a playmaker. They need one of those kind of linebackers. Cause really to play in the NFL. Now you need one of those guys who's just a special guy who can run with wide receivers almost. And he's a tackle machine. He's a playmaker. Uh, they need one of those guys on the defense. Let me ask you this. Give me a letter grade for Nick Sirianni and his coaching this year and put the playoff game into it. What do you, how well do you think he prepared this football team? How well do you think he grew as a coach this year? Um, give me your thoughts again on what you thought with Nick Sirianni. Do the whole year. Okay, and now, uh, you know, I, th I think he came into that game with a B, with a solid B, maybe even a B plus. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I thought he had a good year because the way the season started, and and I'm and I'm being, I'm being, uh, I'm being good to him because 
they they beat a lot of bad teams. To be honest, they did. You know, they, they, they took advantage. I mean, but that's what do you have to do? You got to beat the guys on your schedule. They beat a lot of bad teams down the stretch. When they got against good teams for the whole year, they lost to the good teams. Good quarterbacks they lost to. Bad quarterbacks they beat. Okay, so I'll give them credit for that. But I'd have to say I probably give him I probably give him a B because they were you know, they were overmatched against Tampa Bay. Uh, I didn't think they were going to win the game, but I expect them to make it competitive. That's what disappointed me. But I, I think he's got Jalen going in the right direction. I think he has a team going in the right direction. They like to play for him. Uh, they believe in him. So for that reason, I'm, I'm, I'll give him a B. You know, uh, two last questions for you, G Gary. Yeah. Going forward here, um, do you think the organization is trending with a green arrow up, or do you think it's trending with a red arrow down? I, I think they're trending in the right direction. You know, they, um, you know, really, when you think about it, should a team that's you know only beaten bad teams and is just nine and eight, should they be in the playoffs? Some people would say no, but they made it in, so. They got in against somebody that was above their head and, and they got thrashed. Uh, I don't think it's amazing that that happened. Uh, but I think that the big thing I, I think they're going to do is get back on the, get back uh, on, on the train and keep going in the, in the right direction. And I think they're going to do that. So I feel good about this team. When I look at the, at the whole situation now, they got to do something with those draft picks. I tell you this, it's very important. Three first round picks. They need help defensively. They need help. You know, they, they they got they need a pass rusher outside. They need that linebacker, and who knows, they might still get a quarterback. You know, so they they need to do a good job in that draft. Gary, I'm gonna leave you with something that I posted on my Twitter page, and it's an NFL question here. It's about black coaches in the NFL. Yeah. Um. I'm sick and tired of hearing people say we need more black GMs and black owners. You know what? It shouldn't take a black man to hire a black man. Yeah. That's a culture issue, isn't it, Gary, in the That's NFL? Right. Because don't tell me I have to hire a black guy to hire a black coach. A guy who's a football person should hire the best guy, no matter what his skin color is. That's man. right. You're right. And You're right. so when I hear that, it just it drives me crazy because you and me, I don't want a white coach. I want the best coach. That's right. I want a black coach. I want the best coach. We just yes. got through talking about coaching and putting me in the right position. This is mm -hmm. a culture issue, isn't it, in the NFL? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it most definitely is. And I, I think they're probably, uh, you know, and I know uh, I've, I've talked and then they've talked about doing some things to where uh, they take advantage of it. I mean, because really, uh, when I thought about it, if I had to do it again, I probably would have coached, you know. Because I, I enjoy all the aspects of the game. I like working with young men. You know, I like all of that. But uh, there, there, it was kind of, it was so iffy when I came out. You know, I mean, uh, you know, and I don't have time to be uh, just going through the motions. So, um, I, and I, I really can't say that I, I really looked into it closely. But I, I see more guys are. And there are a lot of guys that are getting in line. For instance, uh, 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 yesterday, uh, D'Amico Ryans, for instance. Yeah. He's a guy... He's a guy who should be headed to be a head coach because he got great people skills. He's he's you know you see he's a, he's a great when it comes to X's and O's. He's a guy in line, but you need players to get in line. You know it's not where somebody's just going to give you the job just because you're African American. No, you got to earn the job. See, so I think there are a lot of guys that are getting in line. And I think it's just a matter of time. You're going to see a lot of guys start getting jobs because there are a lot of guys that are in line that are marquee guys up. Uh, my man down in, in Tampa Bay is coaching uh, Brady right now, the, the quarterback. Yeah, uh, Byron Leftwich. That's Byron Leftwich. A lot of these guys are in line. It's just a matter of them going and getting a job, and, and they get a shot. And that's all they could uh, guarantee, I mean, uh, give you is a shot. I mean, you know, if you're a good coach, you've been a good, uh, uh, you know, a coordinator, you know, you go in, you interview well, you get a shot at the job. But, of course, it's all about winning. You know, it's all about production. It's all about winning. But I do think there are going to be a lot of guys that are going to get jobs because I know quite a few that are in line, and it's just a matter of time.
Fantastic. We need it yep. in the game. One black coach in the NFL is yep. unworthy of the league, and uh, especially when you have 75% of the league African-American. Gary, thank mm -hmm. you so much as always, brother. Talk to you okay. soon. Thank you, my friend. That is our friend Gary Cobb. And boy, did he have a lot to say. And, and, and you know, I tell you guys this all the time. And, you know, whatever you want to read about me, whatever you want to think about me, that, 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 that just bugs me when I hear these so-called football experts saying, we need more black owners. We need more. Not that you don't. Jesus, man. It's like, really? Don't talk to me about the obvious. I, we know this. Oh, we need more black. Is it? It shouldn't take a black dude to hire a black guy. You hire the right guy, dude. Makes me crazy. Hire the right man. Look at what they did in Houston. They hired a black coach because they thought it was going to keep Deshaun Watson in the room. He was the wrong dude. David Culley's a well-respected man. Use that, man. Even though he got $25 million out the door, I'm all right with that, too. All right, guys, hit the like button. We'll talk more about some of the playoff games also that was going on over the weekend. Some telling stuff. Kansas City looks like they got everything going back in order again. We'll talk more about Jalen, the damage that he's done to his potential on being the face of the franchise for the next five years. We'll hit more on that. Troy Aikman was right. He was ripping the Eagles coaching staff the entire time. Brady and the Bucks. I mean, do you ever bet against Tom Brady? That was Tom Brady's 45, 45th win in the postseason. 45 wins is insane. Hit the like button. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. <laughs>